it's it is going to be the best year for a uh, best game for the for the 3ds in 2015 games steam world heist we could actually have a, a band of steam driven robots who are actually humans masquerading as steam driven robots <laughs> we have quite a few games left in the steam world series and we are going to tell a little bit more of the sort of fill in the blanks a little bit here and there with every game. Just like Star Wars. If I could donate my left arm to have multiplayer in Heist, I, I would seriously consider it. Maybe a Kickstarter or something. Maybe a Kickstarter. Guys, maybe a Kickstarter, okay? <laughs> I think we have so many likable characters. Like, they are, they are, there are quite a few of them that are plausible amiibo uh, mm. tenders. Yep. I mean, we were overwhelmed by the, by the attention and the the response, the, the kindness uh, is probably the word I'm looking for from that, from the 3DS community. In Welcome to Family Gamer TV. We've been playing SteamWorld Heist, as I'm sure you're aware if you're tracking with the channel. And I've got Ryan Siegerson, um, CEO at Image Inform, responsible for the game, um, to talk to us about it. So how's it been launching on 3DS? Well... Thanks, Andy. Yeah, it's good to be on the show. It's uh, it's been really, really interesting. We did this, we made this trip once before with the 3DS community when we released three uh, the SteamWorld Dig to the 3DS, and that was uh, at that at that point in time. I was doing it all by myself, and so I I think I slept for about three hours. Uh, for, for all of a week and so this time it's been it's been very much nicer now we 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 are sort of more prepared and uh, we're just enjoying this this wonderful ride and so i mean as we were talking i i really enjoyed the game as, as i've made clear in my reviews and i think something about it just clicked for me that sort of turn-based um action strategy it reminded me of games I guess that predate XCOM, for me it goes back to Laser Squad on the Amigo and oh, games right. like the Chaos Engine in terms of that steampunk feel. Um, but how, how has the wider community responded to it? It feels like it's been well positively received. It, yeah, most certainly. It's a, uh, we've, well for one, the press has been giving it rave reviews. It's, it's, I think it's sort of settling in now uh, on Metacritic, this place where you sort of gather up scores from the press. And uh, it's settling at the best new 3DS release this year. So you came in right at the end of the year. Yeah, <laughs> we thought 2015 yes. was done, and then you've come along and you've matched right. it all up. <laughs> I just squeezed it in there, and it's so fascinating because there are so many sites and publications that have already uh, their Game of the Year awards. <laughs> it's, yes. all, it's all been done, and then comes this game that sort of. Um, puts it on its head yeah so it's uh, it's settling in there and I think it's it's going going to stay that way it's it is going to be the best year for a uh, best game for the for the 3ds in 2015 and I'm Swedish I don't say those things lightly it sounds, <laughs> sounds very much like bragging to me but um, yeah it's so it's been remarkable really it's uh, it's hard to imagine I think uh, when to have a, a company sort of risk everything and and succeed it's great and so if someone hasn't played the game obviously we've got some footage here but maybe you could explain a bit of the mechanics of how it works and how it came together for you yeah so um so steam old heist is a turn-based action strategy game and uh, it is pretty fast paced although it's turn-based which is it sounds like a contradiction of, in terms because you either have the the one or the other, but but uh, there's there's so much action going on in Steamed Heist, and you you control so much of it as a player that it doesn't come across as a slow played game, which I was sort of hoping it would be anyway, because um, the very best game in the universe is chess, and uh, that is uh, that is turn based, and and I was just thrilled when our uh, lead designer Ulla Håkansson who is a genius sort of uh, presented the idea of, of Steam World Heist to me and uh, right so what you do in the game is you move your character or characters depending on how big your heist mission is at the moment and um, it's sort of like a, a 
dual move that you do. You you can uh, move your character and shoot at the end, or sort of sprint a longer distance. Um, and it much of it comes down to how you place your characters. Uh, you can crouch behind barrels and so on. You you see it from the side in a 2D perspective, which means that you can also bounce your shots off the environment, uh, off the, the walls and ceilings. And you can and do some crazy, crazy shots, can't you? Sort of like <laughs> tricks, trick shot, shots yeah. in the pool, that sort of thing. Right. And that, the core game, gameplay mechanic is that when you're aiming, your arm is swaying just slightly. It's sort of bobbing up and down very slowly, which means that aiming and releasing the shots becomes uh, skill-based and not chance-based. It's uh, it's not like you select uh, an enemy that you're going to shoot at and tell the computer to, to calculate if you hit, if you missed, or, or if you did a critical hit, etc. It all comes down to your skill. And there's another thing also to the core gameplay mechanic, and that's every robot as you know is is crazy about hats it's like they're, <laughs> yeah. they're just they're crazy about the hats and the thing is that you want to collect as many hats in the game as possible and uh, to collect hats you need to shoot the hat clean off it means that you cannot uh, take an enemy out of service um, and then collect his or her hat you need to take that hat off and that will cost you a shot, yeah. meaning that, and that can cost you a lot in a in a server <laughs> on level. That it can, can cost more than a shot, definitely. Yeah. But so you sort of have to risk that. If you want that hat, you have to aim it perfectly, hit it, and then be able to pick it up. I mean, wasting a shot on a hat is is can be just incredibly dangerous in this game. And the hats, they are there as an aesthetic thing for our robot friends. They're not, they don't seem to add, certainly as far as I've got, they don't, seem, they don't add any buffs or stat improvements. It's just, just so they look good. It's, it, they look good, but let's, and they don't add to your, mm, your firepower or something. But on sort of a meta level, you should know that the, the robots, the enemies are actually extremely nervous when you walk into the room. If you have a huge hat collection at home, because <laughs> it means it's sort of it's the equivalent of those notches that the gunmen of the West would sort of put in the handles of the guns. Yeah. But does it actually have a different on the gameplay? <laughs> is that just a fun thing you're saying, or does is that calculated? No, it, hats on, in play? It, it isn't calculated. <laughs> the thing is that we we experimented with that. It was a fun mechanic, and it's not very hard for us to do. It, like meaning that. The more hats you amass, uh, if it if it could affect um, the the level of proficiency of your character, the game very quickly became unbalanced. I mean, it it meant if you go for the hat shots very early on, you become super powerful, and uh, so we decided to keep it as an aesthetic thing. It's one of the things that I was actually talking about. When I was out showing the game, game at expos and so on, and I was telling journalists that it was actually going to be a feature in the game, that the more hats you have, the more powerful you become. <laughs> and so I had to eat my words and yeah. uh, eat, eat your hat. Yeah, or eat my <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. And there was another fun uh, thing that I was lying about at that time as well. It, it was that. Um, I was obsessed about these trick shots where you could ricochet your bullet uh, like twice or three times or four times or even five times uh, on the ceilings and walls and then hit your enemy. That We were also toying with the idea of, of um, going against physics, meaning that if you bounced a shot, like the more, the more bounces you would have, the more damage the shot would make. That's um, you got like a, a bonus for being super clever. Yeah, but then I noticed that us ourselves and our testers they were they, we were always going for the trick shots and we would get shot to pieces. Yeah, just yeah. slaughtered because we were trying so hard to get the the bounces right and so on. So we decided to leave that out. But those mechanics are 
we have the code for it. It's kind of interesting to sort of include it in, in sort of a toggle mode, uh, perhaps later on. Mm. Yeah, some nice DLC. And yeah. so oh, this, the game's not just about the play and the mechanics, is it? Because there's the, the visuals and the story of the characters yeah. that seems to be a big part. Now, I, I have to admit, I hadn't played SteamWorld Dig, which I think I was probably the only person in the gaming world, particularly in the gaming press, who covers Nintendo. I'm not sure how I missed it. I uh, just, you know, it gets busy with, that, with the young family. Um, so um, how did this, your, so the storytelling side of it and the visuals, and you've got the, um, the steampunk band Giraffe, Steam Powered Giraffe. Yes. yes. Who I've now since I bought the album since playing the game. Who oh, actually you did. feature in the game, don't they? And so I've been chatting to them as well actually. So oh, how I... how's all that it seems to be so much going on for such a small team? Yeah, well it's oh, that's a lot of questions in one, but yeah, like, I sort of just did it as like a you know, multi shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A shotgun shot. Yeah. So let, let me start with Steam Powered Giraffe because that is just it, it is uh it's an amazing small story behind that. It's and there's this band. They're from San Diego, and they've for for a lot of lot of years they've been performing and touring as a band of steam-driven robots. And they're singing, they're making songs and singing songs about life or existence, I should say, as a steam driven robot. And they have their show nailed down to perfection. They, they have become these characters. And so I couldn't believe it when I saw it because then I got this idea then that then in the, in the game, Steam World Heist, we could actually have a, a band of steam driven robots who are actually humans masquerading as steam driven robots <laughs> nice. and yeah. uh, who would perform in bars like where it's which is sort of blinking at Star Wars at the same time where you sort of get around cantina. in bars yep. at the cantina exactly you have this band in the background and so they I, I wrote them back and said listen would you at all be interested in, in making the Oh, I, I should add that they're fabulous too. I, I really, I really love their music. So, I very cautiously wrote them an email asking if they wanted to be make the official soundtrack for the game. And it turned out that they were big Steam Will Dig fans. So it was, That's it was the match made in heaven. Perfect. So, okay, so let's go back to the other questions. Yeah, but that, but before you move on, that, there's a moment in the game. Where you walk, if you first walk into a bar and you hear some, like it's proper music and it stands out in the game because it's like it's not the sort of things you usually hear in a game and then you discover they're actually playing, which is great. Um, and then, but then you come back to that location later on and they've gone, and I yeah. was like, they can't go. Like where have they gone? And so that was a real driver to want to move the story on to find out where Where'd the, they go. The yeah, giraffe had gone. So uh, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. So that'll be in the next. That'll be the DLC. Like chase, <laughs> find yeah. the world. Chase the giraffe. giraffe. But yeah, yeah it's it, it's sort of the, the story um, obviously it's a story driven game to an to a certain extent. I mean it's the core gameplay that is um, that that started it off, but we really wanted to have uh, quite a bit of story in Steam World Heist or a cute story. A co what do you call it? A coherent story in the game. Um, which we didn't really have in Steam World Dig, as you'll notice when you play that game. That game is very much more about the, the gameplay, mm -hmm. and it was since we are telling just a small part of of the Steamworld story in Steamworld Dig, we decided to expand on it a little bit in Steamworld Heist, and then sort of limit ourselves again so we didn't tell everything about how this universe came about, the Steamworld universe, because we have. I think we have quite a few games left in the SteamWorld series and we are going to tell a little bit more of the sort of fill in the blanks a little bit here and there with every game. There was, so there were some things in the game um, that I was expecting to happen, like when you um, don't want to move, you press your Y button, don't you, you go to guard. Yep. And I thought that meant that I could sort of save my action points for the round and then do an opportunity fire. Oh. Is that something, um, it does, I don't think you can do that unless I'm missing it, is that something you can do or will be able to do? Yeah, well, um, if you uh, that depends on what you mean, but it was 
it's like this in the game that you can sort of move forward a, a, a distance and s sort of stay within shooting range if you understand what I mean yeah so it's still orange yeah and then if you hit the left shoulder button then you sort of switch to your next character if yeah. you want to and uh, and then do that action and then sort of come back to the character and do the rest of your of your thing the thing is that you sort of um, moving moving out into sprint distance like into the blue range that that means that you're you've you decide to either go short or long there you can go like the full distance or or sort of like a, a, a semi long distance in the, within the sprint area so uh, um, I, can yes. people, I can hear people eating is it they're making me hungry are yeah you, it well, sounds yeah. like you're in your nice cafeteria no uh, yeah we're actually sitting here out in the uh, I'm gonna ask them to. to be, That's all right. I was just wondering right. what that was. I was hearing some food and like no, it's, it's drinks food. and some and bottles, then, some corks they're popping. Not, they're <laughs> not feeding me to any of them, so I'm, I'm furious right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's so so that sort of is your choice. Like if if you want to go long and short within your sprints, it doesn't save up um, yeah. the last few yards. So if you like, yeah. Yeah. So if you like in Laser Squad. Um, you could essentially not move in your go and then have opportunity to fight. And I think it's the same in Codename's team, isn't it? Um, and then on the enemy's turn, if they came in within range, you could then jump out and essentially stop them from moving. Um, and there's a tactical, a tactical element. I think I just quite like the sneakiness of that part of the game. <laughs> I always look forward to doing it, so yeah. but not in Heist. No, that's... That, I mean, that's, an, uh, that's a sort of a different mechanic, yeah. I mean, either you have it or you don't I guess uh, it's like we I like this the the honesty of like here's my move what is your move going to be just like chess there's no opportunity for in chess is there yes <laughs> like I said before it's the most beautiful game in the world you can sit and play for seven hours in just play this one game going on for seven hours and your like your your feet or your legs are going numb from sitting down for so long and yeah and your brain is going numb for thinking so long, or you're trying to keep keep everything in, in your head. And you're winning, you're, you're slowly, slowly improving your position, and then you make this one crucial mistake and you reset everything. Or even worse, you're, you're losing the game thanks to this one mistake. This, it's horrible when you do it in chess, but it's very fair. It's like, um, it's sort of like what you deserved. Because if you, I guess if, the way we reason is, if you save up your moves like that, you can always sort of correct for your, for your, being overly brave, to put it in a nice way. Yeah. It means you don't have to commit, and I quite like that about heist. You yeah. do have to use right. what you've got. It's quite. It means it's much more. You have to be quite aggressive in going in and actually sorting things out. There's, there's, and you have the timer as well, don't you? That ticks down again. That encourages you to move forward. That's right. Yeah. So. It is. You sort of have to be true to yourself. It's like if I'm going in here now, and I am definitely uh, counting on making this shot count. It's like, and if if I don't get a critical hit, I will be in serious. Uh, yes. Trouble. Yeah, I know. Having played it quite a bit now, I know that feeling. <laughs> um, then the other thing I was wondering about is multiplayer. It's, it's not there currently. Is that maybe something you, you would consider adding? I know it's not a simple thing to add, but it, it, yeah. I'd love to play with my kids like that. So that is the thing. If I could donate my left arm uh, to have multiplayer in heist, I, I would seriously consider it. If you get a robot and, one. Robot. Well, mind you, <laughs> and mind you, I'm left-handed, so it's like... It's, <laughs> It's, uh, but still, that's quite a price. A right, it is, it, because it's, it really lends itself really well to it. I can, we have it pictured in our heads how it would work too. It wouldn't be a co-op uh, multiplayer, but rather a versus uh, scenario. The thing is that we, we've developed our own game engine in C++. We're not using Unity or, or mm -hmm. um, an environment where you sort of have these, um, where you can sort of just add it as a module. Uh, multiplayer but we would have to write it from scratch and it would take us six calendar months or something to do that so it is quite the investment to to have it in place but like i said before it's if we if we ever if, if we financially and time wise can do it then i really want to do it i think it worked just beautifully because there are 
the possibilities will be will be endless. Mm. Already, I'd, oh sorry, yeah. I'd pay an extra fiver for it at least. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There's one. That's my five pounds in the pot. Right. So it's like if we can if we can fit it <laughs> inside five pounds worth of development, <laughs> then yeah, we're gone break even on on just yeah. one purchase. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I uh, that's something that let's hope for it. Yeah. Maybe a Kickstarter or something. Maybe a Kickstarter. Guys, maybe a Kickstarter, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. That's it now. Right. We've got authority here saying that we should do it. Yeah. And then yeah. the other thing, if you're doing a Kickstarter, the other thing is to do uh, like a, an amiibo so, um, where the um, Nintendo let third parties, don't they, take ownership of, a, of an amiibo production? That's right, whether, yeah. whether it's profitable or not, I don't know, but we've had the Shovel Knight one. It yep. seems like it's, it's certainly must have, I imagine it's sold out. Um, I didn't manage to get one. Um, so, a, some SteamWorld heist of um, Piper yeah. and all the others would be good. Right. And also, this time around, I think we have so many likable characters. Like, they are, they're, there are quite a few of them that are plausible amiibo uh, mm. tenders. Yeah. And, and the thing is also, I mean, we discussed the the possibilities of, of making amiibos quite some time ago with... Uh, with Nintendo, because there was talk already on social media, having Rusty, the main protagonist from Dig, uh, be an amiibo. So naively, we we asked Nintendo, "So can you please make an amiibo for us, <laughs> Rusty?" Do it for us, yeah. Right. And they said, "Listen, it doesn't work that way. It's like if you want to do it, we'll we'll assist you all the way. But it's it's actually the other way around that you're licensing the uh, the amiibo um, brand, and." You are sort of doing it. You're on your own. But I'm very, very happy that Yacht Club Games, who made Shovel Knight, went all the way and, and did it because they paved the way for for the rest of us. Because at the time we were talking to them, they it was also a, a matter of it hasn't been done before, so there are no agreements in place and so on. It had to be sort of invented when someone insisted on doing it and and yacht club did and uh, i think it was a, it was the perfect character to sort of lead the way shovel knight has had just exceptional success as an indie game on the 3ds and i'm, I'm really proud to to sort of call myself their peer we, we actually we interact quite a bit with a lot of the indie developers on on nintendo and elsewhere as well yeah that's so great. It's, yeah so I'm ha really happy for them, and if the, if it's sold out, I'm even happier for them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just haven't um, managed to find one for myself, but certainly it seems like um, people opening them on YouTube is a popular thing to do, and that's a good sign, isn't it? So, um, yeah, so we talked good. about stuff which isn't yet included in the game, um, but I think we mentioned some of the exchanges before we talked. But there mm -hmm. are, there are some tweaks or things coming. Is there anything else you can talk about in terms of updates that might be um, down the road? Yeah, well, sure. It's uh, one of the things that. It's coming very shortly. Is um, uh, multiple language support. In, in order to be done in time, now we uh, um, we released it as an English-only title, and I think that works really well for like a native-speaking uh, community. But for but the dialogue is also sort of it's, it's grown-ups talking to each other. There there are quite a few colloquials and uh, also it's cultural. Fine. For yeah. instance, slang, etc. Yeah. Et so maybe like children won't won't be able to enjoy the dialogue quite as much. So hopefully they'll go for the core gameplay. But more specifically, uh, non-native speakers might actually miss some of the finer points of, of the dialogue, and it's a pity. So as soon as we were done, we sent it off to localization, and so it's coming to it's coming in French, uh, Italian, German, Spanish. And Russian uh, in this in this nice. first sort yeah. of uh, round, and then well, obviously we are going to release it also in Japan, so it's coming in in Japanese. And uh, with that first update, with those other European languages coming into the game, uh, we are going to add uh, as, uh, a few small things. Then, a little bit down the road, we are looking towards DLC also of, of the time. A few, you've just brushed over that. It's a few small things. Or what? Is there no. more you can say? No. Let's just leave it at that. It's a bit. surprise. Yeah. And uh, it's... Um, but 
there are definitely some exciting things coming for Steam with Heist. Mm, and DLC sounds really good. Yeah, it'll be quite nice. Yeah, cool. And so um, a big part of the story, and it feels like um, image and form story, is the support and sort of getting their start in the 3DS community. And that obviously that's a decision you took to launch Steam World Heist on 3DS first again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how, how has that been? And as a, as a secondary question, in case I forget, <laughs> Are there, are there many differences between the new 3DS and the 3DS experience in terms of what the game play? Yeah. So answer I, whichever one you want first. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll answer the simple one first. It's like the, if you have a new 3DS, you will, you're sort of guaranteed a, a, a full frame rate of 60 frames per second, I think, mm -hmm. uh, throughout. Uh, with, with the old 3DS, or the 3DS as it's called, yes. it's... I think that is the one notable difference that we can't guarantee 60 frames per second on that one. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, it's not a high, a high frame rate, frame rate um, game, is it? So you don't no, need... it's it's since it's turn-based and uh, it's things aren't flying across the screen the whole time. It, it's it's not really. It's not the main put-off. We haven't heard that as a, as a negative comment anywhere. Really, that uh, the frame rate is dropping beyond unacceptable and so on. Yeah. It's, I think it actually handles that quite well. But the first one, uh, the first question there, uh, like the decision to go to the 3DS first again, was that uh, like before we made Steam will Dig, we were, uh, mainly we were a mobile game uh, developer and self-publisher. And when mobile uh, sort of switched to, pre switched from premium games to free-to-play, we we interpreted that as as a bad thing because it or at least we were sort of speculating that with free to play you will have to sort of make um, it'll be harder to make really ga deep gameplay sort of engaging gameplay because it might put the more casual players off having to uh, having a game that resists you that that sort of demands something from you and also, we didn't want to stand over the the player's shoulder the whole time, asking for more money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, so we wanted to make just decent games. That's that was the obvious thing. And if we were weren't going to be on mobile, where where should we turn? And so we had made this small effort called uh, SteamWorld Tower Defense back in 2010 on the Nintendo DSi. And uh, about three people in the whole universe bought that game. <laughs> but we had a. Now I'm, I'm very, I'm very much exaggerating. But it was a short um, production from our side, and very surprisingly to us, that game paid for itself in in a decent amount of time. So those three people paid a lot for it. Yeah, <laughs> it was extremely expensive. <laughs> I think it's five dollars on the on the eShop now. Yeah. You, can you can you can buy it still, can't you? Because yeah, you can. You can support DSiWare. Yeah. So that was sort of the obvious answer. Okay, we have we don't want to be on mobile anymore. We had this we have this experience with uh, a download or a self-published title on with Nintendo and it's worked for us. So let's now the 3DS is out. Let's try the next game on the 3. Our next title should come out on the Nintendo 3DS. And so Steel will dig. I'm, I'm glad that you haven't played it yet, Andy, because mm, I would say perhaps it's even more family friendly than uh, than mm -hmm. Steel Mist. And uh, we were not prepared for the sort of um, attention that we would get for that game, because coming from mobile, you have um, you will have intense attention for about 35 minutes, and then it's yeah. the next game. Yeah. But here we were just on, for weeks on end, people were talking about Steam Will Dig when it came out. And we weren't prepared. Uh, it was in, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean, we were overwhelmed by the, by the attention and the, the response, the, the kindness uh, is probably the word I'm looking for from that, from the 3DS community. And so very early on, we, uh, Showdown. We decided that the next game is also going to debut on on Nintendo 3DS. Yeah, and it feels like a good fit for the game. Yeah. And, and going back to the the new 3DS, I've used the second stick a lot on it. I don't. It's not many games I've used that, but because you use that to look around, and then you've got the D-pad to move, that works yeah. really nicely. 
All right, you use it that way. Yeah, I actually use the to look around. I well, first I use the map on the bottom screen, which is which is also a very very special feature of the 3DS. It's yeah. that's obviously going to have to work in in different ways on on other platforms. Yeah, the map screen's pretty integral. You know, like yeah. I'll, I'll I'll check, and particularly because it's so nicely signed, you can see where the doors are. So yep. you, you plan your route, don't you? On where you need to yeah. go. So. Yeah, it, totally, and and it also actually very clearly shows you a few things that you might miss just by looking at the Im environment. For example, turrets uh, mm -hmm. is one of the things that the, the map highlights very very well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've whenever I look around, I just I use the uh, left hand joystick. Uh, yeah. That. Then so, you have to move back to the D-pad. You're right. It's not yeah. it's a, it's no time pressure. It's not effective. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're wasting <laughs> you're wasting nanoseconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's, it's uh, on the on the new 3ds. It's it's a it's a marvelous experience, I think. Yeah, it's and really good. My favorite is just getting beneath the bed cover with a with a headset on and and just disappearing into the game. Yeah, yeah, like I like I wrote in my review, you know, it just the time flew by and uh, I was into the small hours of the night before I realized it. So um, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's definitely a, a unique thing to that 3DS community. I've heard other developers say that and say that they're not sure where that sort of equivalent community is on yeah. other platforms. Um, but I uh, understand it, you won't just be on the 3DS, you'll be, you will be coming to other platforms. Yeah, most right? definitely. The game is, because with SteamWorld Dig we did that, we ported to almost every other platform except mobile. Uh, well, to, to every every major platform except mobile, I should say, Steam will Dig is available. And since we've done that, we have the porting um, knowledge these days. Like porting to these other platforms is going to be infinitely much easier. You just with press the button. The, <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> if it were that easy, right? Yeah. But um, but but that's the thing. Like. 3DS has a, a, a real a real sense of community behind it. I mean, in in the same sense that that Steam does. Like there is a but but the 3DS community is so how do you put it? The they're so, such partisans. Like they they're, yeah, they're very present, aren't they? I think, and there's a lot of dialogue, and you know, and there's lots of pubs in you know, Nintendo Live. Yeah, a nice sort of central place like that, and it feels like their so, approach to coverage is very sort of, you know, it in encompasses a wide yep. view of things, and that's positive. Right, and so it's sort of become one of the um, ways we do business, I guess. I mean, we put it out on 3DS first, not to try it and then fix all the stuff that's wrong with it, to, to give something to the, to the 3DS community first. And then sort of take it to all the other platforms, and and if you combine the sales from all, all of the platforms, it's it you can you can make a living. Yeah, yeah that's good. You have, to, you have to cover the bases though. And so, is, have you got a timeline for that at all? I'm sure people who are watching who maybe have a Vita or want a console will be eager to know when they can get their hands on it. Yeah, it's uh, I sh we get actually get a lot of questions about the Vita. People are sort of anxious to know like are you going to come and yes of course we're going to do that it's uh, it's still a, a, um, the install base is is very um, still very appealing it's they're the people who own a Vita are gamers and uh, and they appreciate a good game so it's definitely coming to Vita we are going to start launching the other platforms uh, hopefully as early as, as first quarter 2016 mm -hmm. And uh, no, and then we'll we'll do what we what we always do. We'll we'll sort of take it one platform at a time, because that's being a, a smallish size studio. That's sort of that's what we can muster. I think. I mean, we are porting to the other platforms. We are making more content for for Heist, and we're also starting to think about what the future might hold after that. So yeah. Nice. One platform at a time is, is, is a good pace. That's nice. And you just reminded me, actually. So one thing I wanted to touch on was the PEGI rating. It's obviously for families. That is one of yeah. the measures um, <coughs> that people can look at. And uh, I know when I saw in the early marketing material, it was down as a PEGI 12. 
mm-hmm. um, and but then your final rating isn't 12 it's it's a Peggy 7 so I was just interested to hear you know how that changed did you have to take something out of the game and how did that work yeah we basically bribed a lot of people <laughs> with Peggy and yeah, just uh, change note... it <laughs> <laughs> no actually it was there was this one word uh, that was in the game that was interesting it's it's not a very offensive word I, I'm since this is a family I'm sure oh, yeah. okay it's a the, the word was bloody and we actually used it in the content of something that is uh, like bloody red right like yeah. oh, it is in a descriptive yes it wasn't right. being used as that bloody robot sort of thing. no exactly so uh, it was they, that was the specific comment they had like which sort of gave it a language um, which up the rate the Peggy rating in, in terms of language mm-hmm. and so we just changed it around and uh, and resubmitted like uh, at the later stages saying that we have we have changed this offensive language or I think we also explained what we meant and then they were very quick to come back back at us and say oh that's very nice so now it's a Peggy 7 game yes nice which is which is very nice because we don't. This is going to sound strange because it's a game where you can you can choose from over a hundred different guns and so on, but there is no blood in the game and it's like it's robots. Yeah, and so there's it, no it, people being shot. That's right. So what, that's the other thing, isn't it, that keeps it away from the, the violence rating that would be a twelve. Which yeah, it's quite interesting because. Right. Um, it is quite high impact and it slows down and there's a sense of I think execution yeah. is a term that's been right. used um, but that doesn't trigger anything in the Peggy ratings because it's not an actual person in the same way that Disney Infinity is just toys so again it's a Peggy 7 so it's quite interesting. Right. I mean I guess you could sort of compare it to having uh, I don't know like putting explosives in cans and then shooting at those cans right it isn't you are shooting um, mechanical things like uh, heaps of metal if you like so maybe that's how we got away with it we, don't tell peggy that we're having this conversation <laughs> well they won't be watching <laughs> but yeah i'm relieved that it's peggy seven because it, it's it means something it's um without without being too cuddly because it isn't it's it's sort of a gritty uh, adventure it doesn't get nasty at any point i think it's yeah. um, Certainly, I'm. I'm not. You know, I'm not that keen on guns for my my kids. You know, we Obviously, don't yeah. aim to avoid them. But the, you know, they felt like there was enough sort of creativity, and the story was compelling. So in mm. a similar way that they'd watch Star Wars, I was quite happy for them to watch and to take turns playing heist. So right, yeah, yeah. It certainly feels about right to me. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Cool. So now we have the approval. <laughs> <laughs> you got my oh, approval. But... Not any Peggy, but <laughs> Family Gamer as well. Stamp of approval. We can put that on the box. That's right. great. I'm actually out of time, so I need to I need to run. I've got to go and make my kids tea, actually. <laughs> so um, I should right. probably sign off. So I could talk about this all day. I really appreciate your time, though. It's it's, a, it's really good to hear. Yep. From the horses. Thank now, you, so Andy. Yeah, when, whenever you want to touch base on anything, well, like Steam will dig when you are when you when you're a couple of hours into that. Yeah. That I I hope your kids will like that game as well. It's for some reason, that game sits very, very well with even very young kids. So, um, yeah, whenever you want to talk about anything, we'll be here. Yeah, Thank cool. You. Well, I shall, I shall play some and then we'll check back. But thanks for your time today. And yep. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.